Hi, Rudy. How's it going? I'm Raul, and I'm joined by... I'm Joseph. A.K.A. Pigeon, the myth, the myth, the legend. We're here to talk about our favorite decks, Tim Trasios. The best deck in the format, I think. Especially right now. Yeah, I think after the Mana Crypt, New Lotus, Nadu, and... Dogside. Dogside. Very <laughs> specific Dogside. I think Tim Trasios has definitely risen off uh, from being an okay deck, tier A, to like tier S. I'd I say suppose. top three decks right now, especially yeah. with the results that I've been putting up. Yeah, it's also a very like very unique deck to build, if you will, because you can build this deck in many different ways. Like you can try reanimator, you can try some different like creature combo decks. I don't think food chain is a viable option, but you can do like a birthing pod line. Um, so it's a very fun deck, I think, and it leaves for a lot of kind of a lot of different uh, type of games you can be expecting to be playing with it. So yeah, we're here to talk about it. We're both enthusiasts. Very excited. Joseph used to be a Magda player and now plays in the Trasis quite back in the day. R.I.P. So, Red. Yeah. Red's bad. Red is a bad caller. <laughs> um, so yeah, as before we start jumping too much into the details, how about you kind of tell us the kind of general game plan of Tim Atrasios? Tim Atrasios, I think right now especially, has this pretty easy game plan. Your turn one wants to be either a draw engine like a fish or a Ristic, or a lot of mana dorks and ramp. Uh, you want that turn two to either be the opposite, so you either want ramp on your turn two if you had a draw engine or a draw engine if you had ramp on your turn one uh and then you want to start really grinding so a lot of viable plans especially right now are like creature combos of like cannon get some ramp out uh seedborn try and get a engine with thrasios timna to attack and draw more cards um even just like smaller draw engines right now like archivist or fairy mastermind just incidental card draw no one will blow up uh and then you want to get to that late game when everyone else is way behind you and then push and be secure with like a grand abolisher or cuts will effect or just a silence um but that's the general game plan i go for in timna thrust right now yeah you know your turn one like joseph said is either mana dork esper sentinel fish so those are very easy to cast turn one mana um spells uh, and then turn two either you're casting trasios or you're even setting up further as well so mm -hmm. this is a small little recap what do you think are the most valuable cards in timna thrust right now in our current meta I think there's two specific ramp engines that I always mulligan for, and if I see I'm very happy to see. It's Smothering Tithe and Lotho. Um, Lotho especially is an attacker, so you always get that incidental card draw off Timna if you play it. And then Tithe is just so, so very good in a draw meta. Like, you may not have anything but 40 treasures, but you have 40 treasures. You could have mulled the three, had a Mana Vault land and a Smothering Tithe, and you've turned to Tithe, and... You have Thrasio, so you can just abuse it. That's abuse pretty, no, it, it's, abuse it's actually it. the best part, right? It's so, so wonderful. Um, besides those two, I would definitely say Hazel's Brewmaster has been MVP, and same with Delny. Um, two creatures that are very hard to counter, obviously, unless it's like Pact or Force of Will, and they give so much hard uh, advantage repeatedly. It's not just going to go away immediately like maybe a Ranger Captain would. Um, you'll It'll be there until it's removed, which I think is very, very good right now. Yeah, I'll add on to your list and add Seaworm Muse as a very, very strong powerhouse Absolutely. to the deck. I think, you know, untapping every untapped step and activating Trasios once or twice per turn rotation, sorry, per turn of per each player's turn is actually really strong because not only are you putting potentially a land into the battlefield, which the deck sometimes struggle with some mana, um, or you're drawing cards that you need to interact. So I think Seaworm Muse is also a uh, noteworthy kind of card to add. Um, so, yeah, I think aside from that, I know we have very similar but very different list, if you will. Last <laughs> I checked, I think we had 10 cards or 11 cards that are differing amongst both of our lists. Which like, is pretty small for Timoth Rass. A lot of the time you'll see like 25 yeah, plus no, that's cards actually like, different. And our cards are actually like very like player specific cards. Like I think I run yeah. more lands than you. And among the 10 cards that are differing in our list. I think it's like four of them are lands. Yeah. So it's like it's it's choice of like shocks or um I think I'm on an extra rainbow land, but it's forbidden orchard, so it does give your opponent a, a creature, which isn't great against Timna, but I, I like having five colors always. <laughs> <laughs> Reasonable people can disagree on like the small difference. I think yeah. you also like you run the spell and I run an it's... offer you can re uh, refuse. I think you know mine's more broad versus yours more defensive, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not, you know, this spell can only interact with incense i believe it is and now for you can't refuse gives your opponent treasures which we don't want but it hits anything but it hits creatures. any non-creature spells yeah. so it's like they're very like 
very, very minute differences in our deck list, I think, which I think is actually kind of cool. We kind of like, we started here and we both kind of like... Agreed a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've changed my mind on a lot of things and I've changed your mind on a lot yeah. of things. Yeah, I was not a Delny believer and then I saw it and I was like, <laughs> guys, why aren't we all playing Delny? Like, hello? Don't ever forget, Kinnon is a triggered ability and with Delny out, you make three or two extra mana. So it's... It's really good. Yeah. So a birds, if you only have a cannon and a birds, that will produce two mana. But if you have Delny, cannon and a birds, that will produce three mana of all the same color, right? Mm -hmm. Just all to be more color. specific. If you have Bloom Tender, if you have a Bloom Tender and you have your, both God. your commanders out and you have a cannon, I think that produces six mana. Right? So it produces four, five, six. six, but you can choose differently because you're making four different colors. So cool. Bloom Tender makes it better because you decide like, oh, I want an extra green. And then you still have another triggered ability off cannon. Mm -hmm. So you can change it to a now another one, another white. Yep. Very good. Not only that, you're also drawing cards with Archivist and Fairy Mastermind twice, Orcish Bone Master Triggers twice. Esper Sentinel twice. Yeah. Like, Timna twice. Most of your creatures are literally power two or less. And you can also like swing pretty easily into somebody with a big bot. Yeah. Because they, they can't block it. So they're only like like a silent killer, if you will. And I didn't believe it until I literally saw it in action. And I guess you can actually even talk about like your kin and basalt at home yes. with Delving as well. Um so this is something a lot of people won't see and is a little hard to recognize. If you have a Grim Monolith um, and a Kinnon out, it, it taps for four, but untap is four. But if you have Kinnon Delny out, it taps for five, untap for four. So it is just Basalt again. Um, you have two Basalts in your deck if you have both of them out. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> not many people will know that. No. Which I think something that Tinder Trasus used to benefit a lot was that back when Doxa was in the, in the meta, we were never always the biggest threat at the table, right? Yeah. It was always a blue farm deck. It was always a turbo deck. We could always kind of sit back yeah. and kind of take advantage of like, you know, there's a gazillion and a half train of Tassos to this. We can just activate Trasios and kind of move our game plan along. I and think, not be as big of a threat as right. a turbo deck. Exactly. But one of the weaknesses now is that since Team of Trasios is like becoming more of a more of a stronger deck, now we're, of, on, unfortunately for us, the threat at the table yeah which i think it's one of the biggest weaknesses that we have one among, one of the biggest weaknesses we have currently i don't know what your thoughts on that is i agree i think um a value seedborn muse in a timnath rast deck used to be a pretty reasonable thing like hey i'm activating once per turn or once each turn and like i don't have cannon now i'm not spinning cannon i'm not doing anything but now it's become more of like it's a seedborn muse that has i only have five mana but now no one else has that kind of value with like just a Dockside yep. win or yep. a Nas win. It's a lot harder. Um, it, it is definitely more targeted to you. So you have to play that very carefully. Um, Seedborn is still amazing. I would never yeah, cut it in my list personally, but it is much harder to sneak that in and be reasonable. Someone has to truly be a threat to like let your Seedborn be. Yeah. If you're putting a Seedborn use, make sure you're being smart about it. Take Know that you might not be able to fight every fight, but be reasonable with your opponents and be like, okay, you can kill my Seaworm Muse. I will not defend it, but let me untap like until once. your next turn so yeah. I can like help be able to interact with the table, right? Okay. Like make make sure you're like uh, interacting with the table and talking to the table because I've done that a lot of times. I'll be like, you guys, I will not defend my Seaworm Muse if you're going to kill it. Let me untap so I can And then prevent. you can kill it. Yeah, like yeah. I, and I will honor the deal. Like even if I think I can, I will protect it if I think I can fight, defend it. But I also don't want to lose the game because yeah. we don't want to do that. You don't want to have to fight over just a value engine and then lose the game to win condition, necro, exactly. Nause, um, breach line, Thoracle, like anything that will spot on just like three car three mana win the game. You don't want to have to fight too, too much over it. Yeah. So I think be, I think that's kind of more of a CDH just tip. Like, mm -hmm. you know, be reasonable in what you're fighting about and always try to, you know, talk to your opponents and be like, fine, kill this, but... Let me untap. Kind yeah. Of, so then I can help you. I don't want to yeah. be tapped out and not be able to help you. So just let me untap. You can kill it. That's fine. Yeah. One of the main differences between our list, uh, before we go back into weaknesses, is currently, and this might change when you watch this video, because I think Joseph and I update our list all the time. We do. I'm, I look at my list multiple times a week. But currently, in this week's iteration, uh, I, it's, I know you're not running Mean Betrayal or the One Ring. I think those cards win the game by themselves. One Ring has been a tough cut and something I, especially with Seedborn, obviously, um, don't love Gone, but I think I'm on so many smaller, especially creature value engines that it's kind of like, I don't really want to tap out for a One Ring or get close to tapping out for a One Ring. Yeah. I'd rather pay two mana for a Fairy Mastermind at some point and just be along. Slowly draw yeah. cards. Sure. Um, but I do think Meme Betrayal specifically, uh, Mnemonic Betrayal for anyone not knowing, um, 
has it honestly felt amazing okay some games it like obviously you their graveyards are stacked and you win the game that is very true but other games it's like a totally dead card in my hand or a pitch to chrome mox which is fine um but pitch i think force. yeah pitch to force great i love that um uh, but it it feels 50 50 of like the best card i could have asked for or the worst card i could have asked for and i don't love that in my good card quality deck um it was a tough cut and it was very recent but i don't know it could go either way it could go in very soon uh or come back out in and out i don't know but um it, it's been weird recently yeah i can definitely agree we were out dog side right you you would yeah. cast a dog side you would grab somebody else's dog side cast that and now you have even much more mana to work with and it's all or, colors and because it's all colors, mnemonic yeah. betrayal is great so but, you can cast like a dog side or you know win so i i get the point like it's it's definitely not as strong i think um, in these grinding matches when people are going for wins and we're hopefully able to stop them, we can grab some cards out of people's decks. And I think if we lose our win cons, Mean Betrayal can help us potentially get there. Yeah. When we have to, you know, emergency decon, we lose half our deck, all our win cons are gone. Whereas the last resource, but I guess sometimes you might be playing for a draw at that point too. So also true. Yeah. So it's you know, I think it's I think it's fair to say reasonable people can disagree on the card. I think. Absolutely. We'll always say that. <laughs> <laughs> Little caveat there. Um so yeah, I think that's one of the biggest differences between our list. I think you're running some spice with Survival of the Fittest and yes. Birthing Pot. Uh, not on Birthing Pot at the moment. I was. Um, it's the reason I cut Neoform as well. Being restricted to exactly yeah. one CMC more no. is kind of bad. Yeah, I agree. Um, as much as I love how cheap Neoform is, I don't love it right now. Um, it's never felt good to cast a Neoform. No. I appear experience. You can you can like sacrifice your Dork to get a Granite Ball or or a Thrasis or Oracle yeah. or Kinnan. Sure. But it's also like it's a big it's threat effect. yeah because if you sack out one mana dork they're gonna freak out and be like oh my god it's grand abolish oh my god we're gonna lose yeah <laughs> um but also even if it's just for value i do have to sack a creature which the same thing does happen for like eldritch or um i guess not really much else right now finale of a station well, i guess you're not sacrificing yeah but it's kind of the same logic you can grab something else I, like i i don't love sacking my creatures especially with timda plan right. um but eldritch being always two or more can get or such less. a wide or two two or more or less yeah. is such a wide range that I think it being three mana and not restrictive is better for us. Like I could sack a one mana creature to get up to three and just get a cannon. Or hey, I'm just gonna get a I don't even know, Delny so I can get some more mana or, or something, right? Um and that way you can politic it a little better than I have to get a two drop or I have to get a three drop. Um yeah. Right. So I think um, just kind of breaking the deck even further apart. I think we both run four silence effects. We have Granite Bolster, Ranger Captain of Eos, Kotso, and Little League Silence yeah. um, as our way to silence opponents. Um, when looking at the interactive interactive package, I think we both run somewhere between 10 to 13 interactive spells, be that like removal or kind of spells, Otawara, yeah. you say you like different types of lands. Um, I think we run a bunch of tutors as well. We might disagree on like... I'm not it's on MCL leader. right now. Yeah. Um, I think that's the only one I have out. Um, it feels good. It It's just hard being a top deck tutor. But that's not vamp. I love vamp, obviously, because so end step vamp is great. Um, but it's kind of telegraphed, or your game plan might change if someone yeah. drops a null rod and you tutor to Smothering Tide. It's like, oh, crap. Well, now Awkward. this is nothing. Yeah, I'm going to top deck this dead card. <laughs> um, and that just feels a little worse for me but everything else i agree uh, lots of tutors yep. especially creature tutors yeah yeah we both don't run mystical tutor no. because it, I, I mean i think that card's bad because it's very telegraph what you're getting it's like here you guys i'm getting this decon <laughs> yeah don't worry about it <laughs> or like a force of will is good to, if someone is trying to push for a win that's great but a lot of the time it's a dead card in my hand of like yeah. Right. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather have a creature or a ristic or anything Some else sort of draw engine yeah yeah so I think aside from that, I think you're on 27 lands, which yes. makes my heart my heart hurt. I went down to 28 recently. I guess I'm technically 27 lands because one of my lands is like Boseju, Windors or whatever. The, yeah, the not the green Boseju, the colorless Boseju, yeah. but it makes your uh, instant or sorcery uncountable. Listen, nothing's better when you have a Cameron of Souls naming wizards and you cast a tainted pack with that Boseju. That does feel good. Very little good. way to lose the game there. Until you get, uh, what's it called? Endurance. <laughs> well, not endurance. Well, yes, but um, what's the blue one? Subtlety, subtlety you get subtlety oh, or mind break trap or something <laughs> yeah. like that and you're like oh hmm bummer a lot of a lot of the thing i've seen too is a lot of people don't run cutsel right now and i think that is okay um but it's been great like a green sun zenith for for cutsel 
they they don't ever expect it. Uh, nope. It's not a grand abolisher, obviously. It may just be a cannon or something. Yeah. Uh, and you can go a little higher. You can be like, X is five. Seedborn Muse. I'm pretending it's a Seedborn Muse, and it's actually Cutsel, and then I win. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't stop everything like Grand Abolisher does, but it stops all spells being cast on your turn, and that is pretty dang premium. It's pretty hard to win when you have a... It's pretty hard to lose the game when you have a Cutsel in the battlefield. Obviously, Ottawara will always get you, even with yeah. Grand Abolisher as well, but... Cod Soul is like essentially like a silence effect, right? Um, and is also incidental card draw. Anything that's larger than its original power draws you cards. So if you have a um, Noble Hierarch, if you have a Bowmaster token, if you have Agathas giving Agathas, uh, if you play Neoform and did Neoform something, it gets a plus one plus one counter. Like there's a bunch of ways to do it. Um, and I think that's also just a bonus. Like it's a silence that draws you cards. Yeah. Thumbs so up. So I guess as we still dissect in the deck, what are the three win cons the deck has? Or I guess win not three, but what are the win cons the deck has aside from what we see Thoracle, the Econ thing to pack? Yeah. Um the biggest one recently has been Devoted Druid, Hazel Brewmaster. And I think that's been really phenomenal. Uh, again, Brewmaster itself can be so directional. I can just exile someone's uh like Birds of Paradise, make a bunch of mana. Ranger Captain is great. Um there's also survival again to put that creature in the graveyard and then get the hazel from it. Yep. Um, like I said earlier with the Kinnon Basalt Delny or just Kinnon Basalt and then Thrasios, obviously infinite mana. Um, I've bowmastered people to death with Delny a few times. That's pretty funny. Which is a scary way to win. <laughs> uh, again, draw engines right now are big, so two pings every single draw is like That's pretty good. You're also murder. making your, your, your orc army huge too. Yes! And then there's nothing to do about it. Yeah. Um, I get the Soul Cauldron has been used occasionally, and we're both on that. I know a lot of people aren't, um, but can find you some lines with other people's decks. I think it's pretty good because you can just grab a Ranger Captain of yours. Yeah. You can just grab or like, again a Mana Dork, a Mana Dork, a um, Bloom Tender. Oh, Bloom Tender. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All my creatures are Bloom Tenders. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck, everybody. <laughs> That's really good. Um, those are really the main ways. Obviously, Thoracle Console or Tainted Pact, um, but. There's also a lot of really niche ways, like Smothering Tithe with um, Fairy Mastermind. Yep. You can force everyone to draw for four mana. They'll have three Tithe triggers, and then they probably won't pay. I mean, obviously, they could. Uh, it's pretty impro improbable. Uh, you make three of that mana back, and then everyone drew a card. So you can force everyone's libraries out. Mm -hmm. And then since we both play Green Sun Zenith, um, you can always cast Green Sun Zenith for zero. It will shuffle into your library. You have no card in deck besides it. Force everyone to draw. Mm-hmm. And then put it right back in. Yep. You just um, have to make sure, like you know, that you have a, a silence effect already. Otherwise, yeah. it's gonna get really awkward. It's it's a it's a pretty convoluted line, and you need to have infinite mana. But yeah. um, it is a minor line in the cards we already all play, or yeah, that we both exactly. play. Uh, that wins the game. And you can like yeah, and I think that's the most important part because as we mentioned before, right? Sometimes we have to decon like emergency yeah. decon. Otherwise, we're literally going to lose the game. I have to find this force of will or, yeah. or mind break trap or exactly. we lose, and that's all I can do. Yeah, and obviously sometimes you'll be playing for a draw, but sometimes in the sense that you can still win the game, you yeah. you want to have a little a couple multiple angles. And I think also Agatha's Cauldron can also like sometimes like I've eaten people's ballistas from their graveyard yeah. with infinite mana and just like <laughs> kill everyone. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So and then you have. If you have infinite mana, then boom. Yeah, so I think that's why that's why I personally like Agathos. Also, graveyard hate, which we don't have much of, if any, actually in the deck, aside from yeah. Hazel and Agathos. And Hazel is on ETB and attack, yeah. so it's not easy to do. You, I guess you're quarter calling it in, but that like is a very hard way to exile one card from a graveyard. <laughs> it's a lot of mana. Yeah, <laughs> I guess Death Right Champions are all their kind of like graveyard hate but doesn't hit everything exactly. So yeah. it's, we don't have much graveyard hate. So I think that's also uh, a good tool to have in our toolbox. So, you know, I think that the thing that tries is laser very tight. Yeah. Every time I have to make a card or add a card. It feels like, terrible. It's like the worst thing in my life. <laughs> like, there is a pet card. It's like a toxic relationship I have with this card. It's like Biomass is familiar. I love that card. But it's a card that's been out of my deck and back in and out of my deck the most. Like, easily. Uh, for those who don't know, we'll put it up on screen. But it's uh, basically a training ground effect. Yep. Uh, but it's on a creature. So you can also attack with it. Yeah. Also, that's why it's in the deck. Yeah. Why I used to have it. But currently out. But. I mean, by the time you're watching this video, you might have been in it, and it, out. Like in and times. out, in and out, yeah. <laughs> um, and I did actually just cut training rounds, which I oh. do feel, I think he feels bad on. Oh, that feels. I know. That hurts my heart. Um, but what it was cut for was survival. So. Okay. And I, I can get your perspective of survival. Yeah. You know, you're discarding the wooded druid to get, you know, Hazel or maybe Thoracle, right? You can literally discard. And sometimes it's as, it's as simple as, like, I have it out, I have some mana up, and someone 
demonic tutors, so I just get an oppo, and then I cast an oppo at instant speed, huh. and that feels great. Or bowmaster, right? You can flash it in. That feels really good um, and pretty unseen. Like not a lot of people will see that play pattern. You do yeah. have to have a creature in your hand, but this deck, my deck runs like twenty-seven creatures. I run a lot of creatures. Yeah, I think you're similar, maybe twenty-five. Yeah, we're in the same ballpark of creatures. Yeah. Um, so you should generally have one if you have more than like six cards in your hand. You know, one of those elves you're not gonna cast late game because he doesn't do anything. Exactly. There it is. It's like a way. Or again, if you have a Ranger Captain, and you want to discard it. So you can use Agatha's Cauldron on it to be an extra additional silent effect. Exactly. There's more There's more um, synergies with it than just seems like from looking at the deck. Very linear. Yeah. Uh, I guess as we kind of, you know, finish dissecting the deck here, what do you think is the weakness of the deck? What's your perspective on it? I think the hardest part is good mulligans and when to recognize good mulligans. Um, a lot of times I feel like I've been keeping trap hands of like, it has a lot of mana, but doesn't do anything, or no free counter magic in a turbo-ish pod, but it's really good on turn three or turn two. Um, you should always be feeling out the other decks of the table. If there's like a Timnacrom, maybe that's okay. But if there's a Rogsai or a turbo deck, a Grixis deck, like you would pretty much always have to mulligan for interaction or turn one draw engine. Mm -hmm. The turn one draw engine is sometimes enough, but sometimes it's not even. Um, and that really hurts to like lose turn two when you had a great grindy deck that yeah. you want to keep playing with um the other one thing i've seen a lot of recently is like you were saying earlier it gets a lot of hate now because it is a i think top three deck um it feels worse when you get a little over hated but i think that is semi-fair um a lot of the times you'll be turn three like smothering tithe or turn two Ristic, turn three Timna, and you're like, okay, I'll draw a bunch of cards. <laughs> and I'm be like, okay, he's drawing like 15 cards. We need to stop him. Um, that is hard to deal with, but yeah, it takes good lips to yeah. be, you know, deflect. You also want you want to move your advantages small, slowly but surely, right? You don't want to be all in once and then become the threat and then yeah. get overhated. I think that's one of the biggest weaknesses of the deck is when you're the best person in the pod. Sorry, best board state at the pod. Yeah. It is hard to 3v1, I think. I also I often find that. It's big. it's borderline impossible unless you have, like, Exodia. Yeah. I, I've done it before, <laughs> but, like, it's pretty impossible. <laughs> like, when you have a Seaworm use, like, the one ring out, like, obviously you can you can probably get there with that kind of a specific card combination, but, like, it's very difficult to be their arch enemy and, and, and still, still try to politic, too. Yeah. Because you can't defend your Seaworm use when this other person is going for the win. And people will take advantage of that. Yeah. Because they'll be like, you know, if they'll you're make a, newer a window player, for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a newer player in the pod, they're going to be like, hey, use all your cards on that Seaworm Muse or that Tracios. Or we'll lose. And I'll win. And yeah. yeah. And, and then you won't lose because, or they, will they won't lose. lose to you. They'll lose to someone who has just yeah. an actual win con. So just be careful with that. And I guess the last one of the weaknesses I used to struggle a lot with the deck is facing turbo decks. Yeah. And that might have been coming to my mall against not being appropriate, but I think. Back in the day when Doxa was in the meta, I think that was the biggest weakness in the deck because people will be presenting wins turn two or turn one sometimes. Which is Doxa. Yeah. Literally nothing but Doxa. Yeah. And you're like, awkward. Oh, well, I can't always mulligan for Force of Will. Yeah. But now it's easier because you don't always have to mulligan for just Force of Will. Yeah. So I think those are like the main weaknesses of the deck. So if you kind of, kind of, you know, adjust your mulligan and make sure you're moving your game plan in a slowly progress way. Uh, where you're still ahead or you're not you're not super ahead but you're slightly ahead of everybody you have advantage. that's how you win yeah yeah there's some advantage and you're not behind as yeah. long as you're not like scarringly behind i think you can always always win a game yeah you're always like you can always present a threat and you can always just win an instant speed too which i think yeah. both the decks run ways to uh win an instant speed with emergence zones and or born upon a win and our new favorite card high fate trickster high fate trickster been very amazing i i loved I loved, um, what's his name? Floodcaller. He's great, <laughs> but I run 27 creatures. <laughs> Sometimes I need to flash in my Thrasios and start spinning Thrasios. Or, or, or Kinnon. Or Kinnon. Delny. Thoracle. I, I can cast a Thoracle whatever I want. Like, that's amazing. Uh, and it's permanent born. Yeah. Permanent. <laughs> so I think uh, that card is just bonkers. And I think that card is amazing. Big thumbs up. And we'll see if he keeps, if we keep it up, obviously, you know, there's power crap power keep that happens um so we'll see if we can you know if it something better than that um i mean yeah it was flood color like what two sets ago and now we already have <laughs> a better flash enabler i mean depending on the deck i think better yeah uh, i think kin and flood call like in the deck kin and flood color is better because you untap and make one mana but yeah pretty much anything else high fate trickster has been amazing yeah um 
any other thoughts on the deck before we kind of move into kind of our experiences and we can talk about some of the tournaments we've gone to and how we perform and you know the exp the lessons we got from those i will say that again once bans happened i was really searching for like a deck i could feel good about and play a lot and you kept saying like tim the try tim the and i was like yeah let's do it let's try tim the and immediately i was very very happy with it and i again changed a lot all at once and then another week and then another week changed a lot um but it's been fantastic yeah. again top three deck right now it's been a nice progression to just see you like how you start you have like a very unique build on it and it's like your your own take on tim the because yeah. it's such a huge deck and then we've been back and forth just like throwing ideas at each other like workshopping yeah which i think has made the the, the decks much better i think i don't know there there aren't that many tim the players here in colorado there's no. like four of us um which are that number might increase i guess uh so it's like a small group that plays that deck um but i guess talking about colorado and tournaments want to tell us about something that happened not too long ago joseph yes uh a week ago today saturday we had a tournament down in colorado um it was the charity i don't remember the full name Caps i'm so kids. sorry it's a yes. cancer it's periodic cancer charity that helps uh families with a financial burden of you know having to deal with kids that have cancer they were able to raise 1600 dollars or so for the event so that's really cool it was awesome um, the whole event was streamed there was a cdh main event but there were also other kind of events that were happening throughout and it was actually really cool to just see the whole like you know a Magic lot of people scene. showed up. Yeah. Yeah. It was not just Magic 2. There was Team Trio's event. There was a Flesh and Blood event. There was a Pokemon, uh, Pokemon event. Yeah. It was really it was awesome. Bleach, maybe. It was like, there yeah. was some weird games. There then. was a bunch of stuff, though. Yeah. Um, a lot of people came out and showed support, which was great. Um, but I did just finish uh, first at that event last week. Um, went undefeated in Swiss and then took top four and won. Um, again, deck feels really, really good right now. There was a little bit of luck involved, as always. But I think... Like, I had a turn two win. I had turn one Devoted Druid, turn two Hazel. Like, that doesn't really happen in this deck very often. And the fact you can do it is really strong. Yeah. I think incredibly strong. Um, all the cards I've played felt good. Uh, again, only thing I really cut was one ring before the event, and that felt okay. Um, might go back in. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, event was run smooth. I had a great time. Uh, everyone was awesome. It was a 50 something person 56, event. Yeah. So you went on the field on Swiss, mm -hmm. which in this kind of events, it made it means you scop you you skipped top cut and went straight to the finals and you were first seed in the finals. Is that how that went? That yeah, is how that worked. Uh, it was top 10 cut, so first and second automatically make it to finals, and then uh, third through 10 play two pods of four. Uh, the winner of those two pods advanced to top four, and then top four pod fights. Um, so yeah, I had ended first in Swiss, so I was immediately first seed. And then Luca, our also close friend, uh, was second in Swiss, so he had a second seed. And then we battled it out. We did, yeah. um, uh, I we cut prize money, because I I like to cut prize money. No matter what, we each get a little more. Um, like averages out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and it makes everyone feel better about their day. They make 250 or whatever it was instead of 200, and I think that's better. Um, but yeah. And I think great. there was another team that trashed this deck in that list too, right? Yes. Shout out to Nolan. Shout out Nolan. One of the old, one of the four <laughs> that in the trashes in the what, what are the few. <laughs> um, and him and I also like we're on probably like 15, 20 cards different, but a lot has changed. And he even convinced me on Elves of Deep Shadow, which I'm trying right now. Um, a lot, a lot of close cards, but a lot of different. Nice. Uh, so yeah, congratulations on top. Going on the feeder on Swiss tournament and making top cut and then even winning a tournament is actually pretty cool. Even if he has 50 people, that's actually relatively impressive. Not many people can say that. So Yeah, that felt great. Thank you. Kudos to Joseph. <laughs> Thank you for running the event and stream. Yep. We have the full VOD on YouTube and we'll link it down below. Nice. Uh, yeah, you can actually... I will link the whole VOD for you guys to see. And I will also be linking our list. I should have said that earlier. Yeah. Hopefully you're still watching. <laughs> I will link both Joseph's and I list uh, in there. Along with that, there's a team that trusts this Discord. Joseph's very active and I just kind of lurk. Uh, very cool people. Very, again, very different list from ours. It's like, all of them so are wild. very different. Yeah. Like, like some are like 35 cards different. I'm like, oh my goodness, that's more than I've ever seen. <laughs> like <laughs> different between us. Yeah. <laughs> the guy that won the boil too, uh, I think he's also in there. And the other person yep. that made top four, whatever. Steel Dragon Shadow. It's also in there. And like their list, again, very different from ours. And they've also, you know, succeeded at a very large tournament. Sound amazing. Uh, NATO also top forward on Tim Nathrasios. He created the Discord. Um, even between us, like on those Derevi effects that 
I don't super enjoy right now. Maybe I could pivot to, but like um, Fable Elder, uh, Emil, uh, Derevi, like That's much different cool. synergies. Yeah, very. It's like it's like a, it's a completely different deck. Yeah, in my opinion. Almost. I agree. You pivot much differently. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good job. I guess any any term any games um, that you played that weekend, any highlights from that, any interactions you saw that were um, kind of cool, or I know. In your last match of Swiss, you and Nolan were actually playing again, and that's when you actually showed a turn two win. Yes. After he had presented a turn two win as well. Yes, so Nolan, uh, going first seat, and I was third seat, uh, had turn one Devoted Druid, pass, uh, had turn two Enduring Vitality, which is a card I'm not on, neither of us are on, but I think it's pretty good right now, um, into Swift Reconfiguration on Devoted Druid, um, but didn't realize that Enduring Vitality says only creatures you control, Tap for any color mana. Hmm. So the Devoted Druid that is Swift Reconfiguration is a artifact vehicle and is not a creature. So he couldn't tap it for blue to cast a Thrasios. So he had infinite green, but no green, no blue to cast a Thrasios. No payoff. Oh, that's awkward. And then I right back after him, <laughs> uh, turn player two pays pass Aristic and uh, passes, and I go cast a Mana Vault, pay for Ristic, cast a Hazel. Pay for Ristic, kill my Devoted Druid, make infinite green, cast a Thrasios, pay for Ristic, and. Uh, Obviously, they didn't have anything because we didn't have anything for Nolan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I paid for my wrist sticks, so it was it was a very quick game. And what was expected to be a very long game because there were three Timnathrasios in that pod, <laughs> which is wild. Wow, <laughs> I actually do remember that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was like, "All right, guys, yeah, settle down. We're gonna be here a while. Ten minutes. Like, oh, you guys are finished." And oh. the and the player four, uh, who turn one had a smothering tithe. Jesus. So it was a very like, wrist stick smothering tithe win attempt or two win attempt turn two. Like it was very crazy. Yeah. Um, the most wild game of that tournament Very for good sure. Very jamming it. Uh, yeah. I guess you you need to jam it because nobody had interaction for Nolan, so it was literally exactly uh, nothing anybody could do for you. So again, well done and huge shout out to Banage Games for running yeah. that event. Thank you so much. One of the tournaments I've played in, so that was like out of state. It was the first uh, CDH Vegas tournament back in MagicCon. Oh yes, October. I think we both actually played on that. We yes. played each other, which is unfortunate because of the how that tournament set up it's like single elimination which is it was 256 player single elimination so it goes immediately from 256 to 64 I th 64 yep. yep 64 and then to 16 and then four then four and, and then winner yeah. it, it was very uh cutthroat but there were also a lot of edh decks that are not quite cedh yeah. um because people at magic Con obviously came to have fun and play yeah yeah um but it was unfortunate we got paired and i was like no <laughs> we there's so many people at one why do we have to play uh raul did take it uh, and top forward both events, the, the first day and the second day, which is amazing. I That is much more impressive than things I've done in the past. So. I don't know. It's, it was single elimination, which has its pros and cons, right? Like, you have to be, play very clean. Yeah. Otherwise, if you make one mistake, somebody will punish you for it. Um, so that's kind of why it's difficult. It was also, and, and this is not to throw, like, like shade at the uh, tournament organizers, because no. I'm sure they did their best, and they were just, like... And in this format, they, they probably don't understand or run a tournament before. They probably should have started much earlier. Yeah. Uh, but like day two was like a different <laughs> beast. It was a different beast <laughs> because we started like an hour and a half late. And like also the final game uh, with our friend Freedom Waffle. Um, it only lasted 45 minutes because we were literally getting kicked out of the venue. Yeah. <laughs> the venue closes at midnight and security kicks everyone out. So we're getting close to midnight and the, the head judge of the event is like, I don't think we're going to finish this game, so whoever has the most life total at the end wins. And we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was as good as they could run it, but yeah. uh, unfortunate. So It was just wild to just kind yeah. of spend all day there. And it's like, oh, I guess this is the most anticlimactic game. Yeah. Um, game I ended had... with life loss. It's like, yeah. what? <laughs> and I, I had to like, I, I, I pushed win, even though I, I, you know, it was only a few things that could have stopped me. But I was like, I don't think I'm going to get another turn. They're, yeah. they're going to kick us out in like 10 minutes. Speaking of that Besaidu tech. It was, yeah. It was, uncountable. Was what was cute. it? On Cannibal Demonic Tutor. Yes. For and they my tried win. To counter it. I could only lose to silence and they had the silence, of course. Yeah. It's, I was like, ah, oh, dang it. This is it. <laughs> this it's all you could do. Yeah. It's, it was it was kind of cool playing with a, a lot of different people and those pretty large events. Again, very different from your typical like boiled style deck. It is different in the sense that you really can't make mistakes, otherwise you are eliminated. No. But there were also some or in the earlier stage, right? Around one or two, probably the game qualities weren't as cutthroat, yeah, if you will, for because sure. they were, you know, like, they were EDH players trying to have fun, and I'm here like, a historical econ. Yeah, <laughs> uh, much, much different approach as the the rounds went on for sure. Um, I, I think I had two round one opponents day two that were like, I'm playing elves, and I was like, 
thumbs up. I hope I win this game because if not, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should be winning this no matter what. Um, I think you made top 16 the second yes. day, right? Uh, top 16, so I got a nice box of dust when that felt good. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have to play each other this time, which was good. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. I guess the pricing for it was, I think your <laughs> top 16 pricing was better than my top 4 pricing. I got I a complete was. set of like some random... It was like March Machine. <laughs> yeah. Or not even March Machine. It was like All Will Be One, like which is a very not wanted set. No. Not a bunch of chase cards, so no. it felt bad. Yeah, it was. Um, it was, a, it was a complete non foil set. Yeah, it was to, like, to state that. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was kind of cool. And this is something like if you play different kind of decks, you have. Uh, I lost to Slivers the day one yeah. in the tournament. Just in top four. In top four, yeah. I lost to Slivers top four. Congratulations to the guy that won. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a lot of Brewers advantage because me, the Rockside player, and the Yuriko player have didn't no know how idea. The deck, yeah, we had literally no <laughs> idea what, what this deck did. And the minute I killed an opposition agent, I just kind of like, oh, oh, guys, he's Oops, winning. I lost. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was a big chain combo, I think, with Sliver Queen. Yeah. Um, and then there was a different Sliver that like made copies of Slivers. It's like a Myriad Sliver. Yeah. I, I still have nightmares about it because I literally never would have known. Oppo and like yeah, and it's like Brewers advantage too. Like I didn't know how to interact with this deck, and like like I was holding to a silence and a counter spell in my hand. I just didn't know when to use it. And neither one would have mattered. Yeah. Because it just puts it right into play. Yeah, it's all so, yeah. abilities. So it was just it was just awkward to do lose that game and then obviously day two we were kind of kicked out and I don't know that would be an interesting game to play I've never played against Freedom Waffle um quite a japper <laughs> especially in a top four game that was, yeah it was interesting to watch <laughs> yeah um so yeah I guess that's our recent most recent tournaments I think you also top sixteen at a five k slash two point five k that happened not too long ago two weeks ago now down in the Colorado Springs it was the um. Battle for the Throne 2. Yep, the online games, um, folks. Unfortunately, there was a snow storm that weekend, so it wasn't as many people showed up as we had originally planned, but still went well. Um, ended fourth in Swiss, which felt great. Uh, got to really start, cool. yeah, got to start first in a top 16 match, uh, and then lost to Tyler, our buddy on Arkham Dagson. Shout out Arkham Dagson. He is the one committed player to that deck <laughs> ever, and he does great. And yeah. I've lost to him many, 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 many times. <laughs> um, Flies under the radar very well. Brewers uh, advantage as well. Absolutely. And I have to be the one that tells everyone, hey, this deck can and will win. This Please don't just focus me because it's Ark of Dagson. <laughs> Funny. Same tournament. I got uh, my training grounds, Force of Negation by an opponent when I was playing Tyler. And he had like uh, he was at uh, activation away from winning the game. Doing the tank. Oh. Not winning, but doing the tank. I was like, oh, jeez. So <laughs> Guys. <laughs> um, Why my training grounds? Especially like... <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, and I like missed Landers. So I was like so high and I was not winning that game. Um, and I guess just to show variance, um, in the same tournament that um, we went to the Colorado Springs, I had top, the weekend before I had top four back to back yeah. at the Vegas event. But then I literally drew every single one of my games and lost one. So I didn't make top cut, unfortunately. But it's just kind of the variance of the game just to show people like sometimes you will win games, sometimes you will lose games. The deck does what it, the deck does, and and there's it's obviously okay. variance, and only so much you can do with mulligans or yeah. like other, opponents. All your interactions, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. um, sometimes they're going to force of negation your training grounds, and you're going to be like, okay, I, I truly can't do anything. I'm sorry. I, I tried to just that. get a little, not even advantage, just like a little bit of mana. My trust is also even out by then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't make sense. Uh, but do what you can. Always. Um, Play good games, have yeah. fun, uh, interact be well, be honest. Yeah. Um, I got my. Oh, it's wrong pin. Dang it. I tell pen. the truth it's you, DH. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But yeah, I think those are our thoughts on Tim Natrasios, kind of some of the experiences we've had. Um, I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. I, I've really enjoyed the deck. I've been playing it for a very long time. Um, I was I was playing it before the cool kids started playing it, um, but it's okay. We welcome. Feels good. We it welcome good. everybody with open arms. <laughs> welcome to the deck. Um, any final thoughts from you? Uh, no, decks felt great, and I'm glad you recommended it to me. Uh, I have that little shout out on my deck list now. Thanks, Raul. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, it's been great to play it and do well with it. Being awesome. Happy. If you play Team Atrasios, let us know what weird or unique synergies you have on your deck and things you recommend us. Obviously, we're always trying to change our decks and move them. And if you don't play Team Atrasios, you well, always why can. Not? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Why, why aren't you? Uh, great deck. We highly recommend it. But thanks everybody for watching. Have a wonderful day and we'll catch you later. Bye.